This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full time position in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. Hey, what's going on, guys? So, in this video, I want to show you how to implement cache with Redis in Node.js. So Redis can be used as a, a cache mechanism as we're going to use it here. It can also be used as a persistent database like a NoSQL type database. And I do have a crash course on Redis. It's about two years old, but it's still very relevant. Uh, I don't think any syntax or anything like that has changed. So if you want to check that out, I'll put the link in the description. But the advantage to, to using Redis is that If we're to make a request, so we're going to actually make a request to the GitHub API to get the number of repos for a user. And what we're going to do is store that number in our Redis cache. So Redis is basically key value pairs. And what it does is it'll allow us to make less requests. So it'll cache the, the data so we don't have to keep making requests and it will speed up our application. Uh, now, we're not going to really build a you know, a real application. I'm just going to show you how to implement it, but you're going to see the benefits of it and you're going to learn the foundations to uh, to use this in your apps in your Node.js apps. And of course, you can use Redis with other technologies as well. Now, you do have to install it on your system. So I'm going to show you how to install it on Mac and Windows. Um, well, at least I'm going to tell you how to do it on Windows and on Linux. You would use your package manager. So aptitude or whatever, whatever it is, whatever distro you're using. Um, so you would do that in deployment. As far as Windows goes, you need to go to this this link here, which I'll if I remember, I'll put in the description and you just download the zip file and the zip file has a, a, an executable called Redis server and you just want to run that. And that'll run it on your machine. And then you also have Redis CLI, which is the command line interface. And you can actually interact with, um, you know, with your Redis store. Uh, if you're on Mac, I would suggest using Homebrew. Okay, so if you don't have Homebrew installed, just go to brew.sh, grab this right here and throw that in your terminal and run it and you should be all set. Okay, once you do that, you can run brew install Redis. I already have it installed, so it'll probably just tell me that. Uh, but once you do that, it'll ask if you want to basically run it in the background as a service or or not. I would suggest doing that um, that way. It's just running. And then once you have it installed, you can actually run Redis dash CLI and it will bring you into the uh, the command line interface. And you can see it's running on port 6379. So that's the default port. And we can actually set values here if we want. So just simple key value pairs like we'll set name to Brad. And if we want to get that value, we can say get name and it gives me Brad. So very simple. And again, you can use this as a database or as um, you know, as cash like we're doing. So I'm just going to exit out of here for now. And now we're going to jump into Visual Studio Code and get started with Uh, with Redis and Node. So let's first of all run npm init dash y. We'll just create a quick package dot JSON here and we're going to install a couple dependencies. So npm install express and we're also going to be again making a request to the GitHub API. So I'm going to use node fetch for that. Uh, if you want to use something like request or, or another package, you can do so. And then we also need Redis, which is the driver that allows us to um, to use Redis within Node. All right, and then I'm just going to install Nodemon as a dev dependency. So uppercase uh, dash uppercase D Nodemon. And then we'll just go ahead and add a start script that will run our our main file with Nodemon. So let's just say start and we'll have this run Nodemon and we'll call it index.js. So let's create a file called index.js. Okay, so first thing we'll do is bring everything in. Let's bring in express. And let's also bring in node fetch. As fetch and then we also want Redis. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm just going to create a variable for our port. I'm going to use uh, environment variable here. Uh, so process dot env dot port or 5000 if that doesn't exist. And then let's also add the Redis port. Oops, what I do get rid of this. And the Redis port is 6379. And we'll change the name of this variable here to Redis underscore port. Okay, and then what we need to do is create our Redis client. So we set this to Redis dot create client and then we just pass in the port. All right, and we need to initialize express, of course. So set that to express and let's do app dot listen and let's listen on 5000. And I'm just going to set this to back ticks instead of quotes. And we'll put our port number in here. All right, so we'll save that. That should at least run the server. If we do NPM start, okay, app listening on 5000. So now what I want to do is create a function that we're going to run when we hit a specific route. Let's actually create the route first. So we'll say app dot get and I want to be able to go to slash repos slash and then whatever the username we want to get the, the number of repos for. And then when that's hit, we're going to run a function called get repos or I mean, we're not getting the actual repos. We're getting the number of them, but that's fine. We'll just leave that. All right. So get repos. So let's create that function. So this is going to make requests to GitHub for data. So function get repos. And this is going to take in a request response next. Okay, because this is middleware um, and we're going to make a, a we're going to use a sync await when we make our request. So we want to mark this as a synchronous. Um, and then and since we're doing that, let's use a try catch in case we get any errors. Okay, so if we get any errors, we'll just do a console error and then we'll do a response with a status of 500, which is just a server error. Okay, so in here, let's do a console log and I want to console log fetching data so that we can see when this is actually running and when the request is actually being made. And then we need to get this username right here that's passed in, which is going to be in request dot params dot username. And I'm actually going to just use destructuring here to pull that out. So we'll say we'll pull username out of request dot params. Okay, now we want to make the request. So let's create a variable for the response. We want to await fetch because this is asynchronous and the URL is going to be the GitHub API, which is API dot GitHub dot com and we want to do slash users slash and then the username. Okay, and that's going to give us a whole bunch of data. So we want this to be in JSON format. So let's call this data and we want to set this to await because this is asynchronous and then the response dot JSON. Okay, just like the front end fetch API if you've never used node fetch. And then for now, let's just uh, res dot send data just to see what we get. So we're not implementing cache or anything just yet, uh, but let's try this out. So we'll go to our browser and go to uh, let's see. HTTP local host oops, local host 5000 and we want to go slash repos slash and I'm going to put my username in here. Okay, so this it gives me a bunch of data and what I'm looking at here is the not the fall um, public repos, which is 174. Okay, so what I want to do is have the response just say, you know, username has 174 repos and this is the this is what I want to put in our Redis cache. Okay, so back in VS Code, let's go right under where we got the data and let's say const repos and let's pull that from data dot public underscore repos, which will give us that number. All right. And then this is where we actually want to set to Redis. 
Okay, or set, yeah, set data to Redis. And the way that we do that is we use our client that we initialized above and we can do dot set. Now I'm going to use set X, which is it's like set, but you can set an expiration because you, you don't you probably want to set an expiration because the data on the server could change. Um, so I'm going to set this. Uh, basically, it takes in three three things. It's going to take in the key, which I'm going to use just the username. Okay, so the key is going to be the username in this case, you know, Brad Traversy, whatever I put in the URL. And then second is the expiration. I'm going to do an hour. So 3600 seconds. And then next is the data that we want, which is going to be the repos, the number of repos. Okay, so that should set it to our Redis cache. Um, and then as far as a response, I'm going to create a function called set response. And that's going to take in the username and it's going to take in the repos. Okay, so let's create that set response up here. Uh, it'll say function set response. And this is going to take in username and repos. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and return a template literal and we'll put some HTML in here. We'll just do an H2. And let's put the username. We'll say username has and then repos GitHub repos. Okay, and that's it. That's all I want for the response. And let's try that out. So we'll save this. Now we're not implementing the cache just yet, but it should save the value to Redis. Okay, with this line right here. So let's go back and reload and we get Brad Travers. He has 174 GitHub repos. And if we go into our Redis CLI, I should be able to just say get and then the key, which is the username. And then we go 174. Now, if I open up my uh, Chrome tools here and we go to the network tab and we reload, you can see that for finish we have about 170 milliseconds. If I reload 161, 157 and every time I reload, you can see down here we're making that request, we're fetching the data. So I want to now create a piece of middleware to cache the the value um and to use that cache. So let's go right above the route and let's say cache middleware. And middleware is just a function that runs in between the request and response cycle. So when you hit the route, um, the fu this function will run, you know, in between when the request is made and the response is given. Um, and we can grab any request params or anything like that. We can grab the username and stuff. So let's say function cache. And since it's middleware, we need to pass in requests, response and next. And I'm going to get the username from the URL. So I'm going to just pull it out of request dot params. And then what we want to do is use our Redis client and we can use the get method. And remember, we have uh, right now we have Brad Traversy as a key. Remember, these are key value pairs. So we want to get get it by the key, which is whatever the username is. And then we have a callback as a second parameter, which has a possible error and then the data or the value. So let's just check for the error. And if there is, we'll just throw error. Okay, and then we're going to make sure the data isn't null. So we'll say if data is not equal to null, um, then we're going to res dot send. And we're going to use our set response and pass in the username and then the data that is in the cache else. Then we're just simply going to call next and we're going to move on and it will make the actual request. All right. Now, in order to use this cache middleware, we simply pass it in as a second parameter. Okay, so I'll go ahead and save that. And now this should work. So if I go back. 
So remember, it took 157 milliseconds. If I reload, 8 milliseconds. Okay, and if I keep reloading, look, 1, 2 milliseconds. And if we go back to the console, notice it didn't, we get no fetching data. It already, it already got put in the cache. Okay, if we look at, for another user, so let's, you, let's look up um, Getify, who's Kyle Simpson, which is uh, uh, someone I follow. And so the first request is going to be, you know, 199 or whatever, because it is making that initial request to get that data, to get the number of um, repos. All right, but if I reload, now it's going to get the cached version, which now gives us one millisecond. Okay, and if I keep reloading, and then I look at the console, it only fetched it once. Okay, so you can see the benefit here. And if I remove that cache middleware and we go back and I reload, look at that, 625 milliseconds, 186, 133. And if we look in the console, it fetched every time. Okay, so you can see the benefit here. Not only it speeds up our application, but it also limits the number of requests. Uh, a lot of times, such as with the GitHub API, you have rate limiting and you only have a certain amount of requests you can make. So um, there's a lot of benefits to doing something like this with Redis. Um, so, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. And obviously, this is a very simple implementation of it, but it should give you an idea of how to use it. And um, and hopefully you can uh, optimize your applications with it. And if we go into our CLI, we should be able to say get uh, getify and 51. Okay. And if you want to, I mean, I have a complete crash course on all the commands and stuff, but if you want to get rid of everything, you could do flush, uh, flush all. And then if we do get Brad Traversy, you can see that nil just, it just means that there's nothing in there. And but if I go back and run that, that should cache it. And then if I run this again, there we go. 174. All right. So that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this and, and got something from it. If you did, please leave a like and I will see you next time.